Although again, back quicker than I thought maybe, because the garden's looking so nice, even though it's it's dull and there's a dampness in the air and it's not particularly warm. The light's good and the erythroniums and the spring bulbs are out in mass. So I'm going to take you on a little walk as I walk around and see what we find today. Some nice little muscaris and some of the double formed of anemones, Nemorosa. But it's the erythroniums and, and they get everywhere. This was a trough and for some reason or somehow probably because I was recycling compost. It's a trough with dwarf willows in but recycling old bulb compost erythronium craigt and cream got in and has been flowering away there now for years quite happily in the wee trough so you can see one over there maybe in the the bottom of that bonsai, same way erythroniums getting in because I recycle the potting compost. But in some of the frames the, they're tucked in. You can come up and we can see the yellow grandiflorums. These are from the, this is the Erythronium Sibiricum complex. We've got a number of forms of that. I still haven't 100% worked out what they are, so that hence the reason I just call it the Sibiricum complex. But coming up, perhaps the, the most concentration of blooms is in the, not surprisingly, the plunge beds where all these are growing in the in mesh plunge baskets it's things like this got these wee holes this is a small one I usually use slightly bigger and deeper ones but what that, what that means is by having them in that and plunged into sand I can lift them every year, ideally every year but in reality it's more likely every second or third year and replant them in that way you get the best increase and the best out of the plants. If you've got them in pots and you don't repot them after about three years, even after two, you'll notice that the vigour starts to decline. So there's all sorts in here. I'm not going to necessarily go through and name them all there's a lot of the species and hybrids. The yellows include, are mostly from Tuluminense and the, the pinks are based on Revolutum and the whites are based on either Californicum or Oregonum. But as I probably mentioned before, we like the, the work area, if you like, the, this bed to blend in nicely so it backs on to the rock garden. And out there you can see the, the tall white erythroniums out there are actually self-seeded from the, the plunge beds. Down here some of my own hybrids have been trialing and they do really well but I haven't named a lot of these because I haven't distributed any of those yet but I, I, when I will if I do send them to other people or supply a nursery with some to, to bulk up that's when I'll give them a name if I decide they're worthy oh, blackbirds getting ratty with each other here. This is a Craigton cover girl. It is the first of the pinks, or oh, the only of the pinks that I've named a number of many years ago in fact. And it really is a good doing plant. The colour will vary slightly. It's looking here very good dark pink but in some years depending on the weather 
it might be a slightly paler pink or on your climate and this is the case with a lot of them and also the leaf markings will, will vary slightly from year to year. Down here we've got a, a seedling from Californicum from White Beauty and White Beauty does produce seed and it is fertile and the plants come very close to the parent. This is a heiress uh, named Joanna, the hybrid between Tuluminense and Revolutum. But you get the idea of the garden density of the planting, the naturalistic style. The Fritillaria Imperial is going over. In, since the last video we've had a um, snow, sleet, hail and rain and cold, cold weather obviously. That None of the snow or anything got a chance to lie but it didn't stop it damaging and some of the rhododendron flowers have been frosted. Around here of course there's, there's lots of trilliums, the different types. The Kuribyashi chloropetalum types here. And move down there, there's another group of um, the pinks, different colours of pink. These are those are all seedlings. Growing there I can see some also the frittle area meliagris. But the light's much better for me today than it was that bright su sunny day, the last day I videoed. It was very difficult for me to see the screen and see what I was showing you. And it was also probably more than the capability of this little camera to deal with such a contrast of light. So the light's much flatter today, which is good. All sorts of trilliums there, still not in full flower. And it's great when you see the ferns, the new growth on the ferns. We have a lot of ferns. Just there. The mash. You can see a lot of the very early bulbs, of course, the the scillas, the the, the, the galanthus. They're all gone over, uh, but the leaves are still there, and I can see more fern coming through here. Groups of self-seeded erythroniums, and there's a narcissus that I've planted out at some time. It just is such a lovely time and of course now the the leaves are coming out on the trees. You just go and look at that actually because this is a lovely time. These are these acer two acers here. These are japonicums. I grew from seed oh many, many years ago. And then I've been cutting back the lower some of the limbs to to create almost little clouds lower down with the wonder of option, leaving me the option of always reducing them down to there semi bonsai them if you like although it wouldn't be a bonsai obviously but that very stylized Japanese style of trees but I love the way the leaves come out and the different colors when they're just breaking so all on the same, exactly the same tree, so you've got that and then a week bit later they turn to that and of course the beautiful flowers. This is a similar seedling that lurked about in a 
pot for a long time before I planted it out. So it's quite a lot smaller and stunted. So. Right, let's. that was a detour. Let me get back on my way around the garden. Some of the smaller, so-called smaller, rhododendrons, they're only smaller because some of the bigger ones are away above my head. They're in flower, some, a lot of the big ones are not out yet. In this bed we've, we've had a lot of early on, there was leucogium and galanthus, so there's no drops, there's no flakes, and all the early stuff, and now there's all sorts, there's Trilliums, different kinds of podophyllum, more trilliums, there's lilies in there, there's fritillarias, there's veratrums, more trilliums, lovely, I love the colour of this one. Some of these types, the Kurubiashi chloropetalum types are are, are very dark in flower, but this one's almost glows. I love that glowing pink. In. Mandragora growing its leaves. One year, I hope. I've never, we've never ever had it in the garden, is the, the beautiful big fruits that come. We've never had that. We've had flowers, but never the fruits. Jeffersonia's down here, and around here there's a a nice white trillium, trillium albidums. This trillium grandiflorum, pink, pinkish. It's got a wee hint of pink in it. But round here, as I grunt, as I bend down, the, the dark pink, this is the Gothenburg pink, a group. And one of the great advantages of the Gothenburg pink group is that it tame um, come back a bit more so you can see the whole little group one of the advantages of the this group is that they they come from seed and you will get a slight variation in the depth of pink but they're all good pinks So areas we've looked at before in different seasons, the garden does change remarkably and this is perhaps the time that it's at its most colourful at the ground level, although saying that there's, there's other times when the next phase of plants, but this is my favourite group of plants. The dicentras of course. You can see how they just grow. I'm going to skip that bit of the garden today. But you can see how things grow down here in the path. These little white erythroniums. It's erythronium elegans seeding out into the path. Elegans seems likes to seed into the grab. Well, they all like and this little form of revolutum, very short, is the one from Vancouver Island, an elegans, and there are in this colony some hybrids between the two. I don't see one yet. The one that you see there going over with a bit of pink, that's fairly typical, that the, there is a pinkness comes to the elegans flowers as they fade. So 
some more little rhododendrons. The peony lutea, Ludloii, seeds about all over the place, so it's in many places. Over here we have the Erythronium Craigton cover girl, that was a group that I planted out I was reworking the front at that area of the bed and we lost a nice rhododendron from there it died out and so that's why there's a sort of bare patch there that's slowly getting filled in and the path is gradually, if it weren't for the slabs we wouldn't be able to walk around the garden because everything just seeds around. That's what's that's interesting. Oh, just a revolutum hybrid. And this is it. You get to go and explore what's there. This is a, this is a path. But plants are more important than people in this garden. There's a fritillaria pallida. Flowering among the erythroniums. And again, it's always lovely. I planted the, the Hibernias, obviously, in there. But they, I, I love the way the anemone rhizomes have come down and poke out through the cracks in the wall. I just love it when nature. You allow nature to do its own thing in the garden. Here we have some Trillium grandiflorum. There's a seedling down there. There'll be lots of seedlings. And as we come round, pan round, there's a whole lot. Grandiflorum does well in our garden. Growing right inside into the back under the shade. And then this area, under the big rhododendrons, was so shaded for and dry for a long time that we couldn't grow anything. So we let the some of the lily of the valley and the other plants just to, that, that like to spread, we let them, but now there's more like getting in. I'm dotting it with, I brought in the anemone, there's some, I plant there's that same. Dicentra cucularias, which will spread and seed in there, and some of the the bigger, more robust erythroniums that can cope with the conditions. And now we've opened it up to the light to come down. Apart from all the the gallium, this gallium seedlings that are, I'll have to get out and get rid of. We up here in Scotland we call this a sticky willies. Because it's that plant that's got the wee, the wee hooks and it sticks to you and the seed sticks to everything and that's how the seed spreads. And it must come in on birds and cats and other things. But it's fairly easy to get out. And we'll get that out before it seeds. You can actually eat it. The, if you get the tips, when they're young, they, they taste like um, like peas. But if you you want to get them when they're young, because as they get older, it's not a very pleasant texture in your mouth. So there's some of the. So we will spread and get more colour pushed in there. Trillium seeded, and just down look down below the trillium. Look at all the almost like grass seedlings. Ger seed germinating. Because now it's opened a bit, the light's getting in. And I'm hoping that this carpet that surrounds me here will extend right the way through and up to the base of the boundary hedge. Although I need to keep a pathway clear along the hedge to get in to give the, cut the hedge. 
Round here, little erythroniums growing in the rocks put themselves there. Erythronium grandiflorum, a much later form. I showed earlier, can't remember if I showed it on a video or in, in a bulb blog, written bulb blog. I think I showed a, a, a grandiflorum about a month ago that flowers very early. This is the more typical time for the grandiflorum to flower. So around here, there's a bit of a path in there that goes into one of the compost, well all the compost heaps and the leaf mould are in there. So the wee bit of a path that goes in there, that's why there's that bit. And you can see the earliest of the erythroniums are going over the lifespan of the individual flowers has perhaps been shortened a bit by the severe weather we've had recently. There's Japonicum. Erythronium Japonicum's in there as well. There's a good group of them. I can see the leaves and the flowers just coming out. The Lathyrus, the pea in there. Lots of lilies. Peonies. This is another area that we recently, I say recently, over the last maybe five years, or maybe it's a bit longer, we cleared from very dense shrubs to open up the planting area. And it just starts. Once you start it, it's like light the blue touch paper and stand back. If you allow things to seed, if you find the plants that are happy in your garden, and you allow them to seed and spread and do their own thing. There is only Americanums we're looking at down here. It's a wonderful thing, nature. The way these beautiful little marginatas nestle into the cracks and spread a nice little cluster of new growth giving us a tight format growing and things seed into the rock this rhododendron little rhododendron here has been frosted but that self seeded into the moss on the rock Some more of the Trillium rivales and erythroniums growing in the crevices. Up there we've got the Jeffersonia, different Jeffersonias, showed you them last week. The, rhod the, the rhododendron, dendrocharis has suffered in the weather. But you know, gardeners as you get more experience and older, you learn these disappointments of when your flowers get frosted. You just have to be patient and know that's just part of gardening. There again, there's a, a rhododendron that's been coming out, never got to its best. And the nighttime frosts that we've been having this last few week or so, I've just taken the flowers for this year. Now here we have the, this is Craig's and Cover Girl again here. And we'll just push round here as I'm, you stick with me, I'm only have another few more minutes and then I'll, I'll wrap up, but I just want to come round this spot here, see what's here. This is an interesting form of Erythronium. Well, it's, an, it's a hybrid of Revolutum. And you, you can tell that because the filaments are, are narrow. They're not the expanded filaments and the pollen's creamy white. Although you do get occasional rev revolutum, true revolutum that will have cream pollen. And here's some well-chewed Trillium erectums.
I could I can spend hours poking about and looking to see what's in. But again, the pathway is getting more and more difficult. Although we do have to keep some path clear. But everywhere you look, look this Trillium Valley is poking through there. Trillium Cordialis creeks in purple coming there. The primroses have gone over. We still have some of the big trumpet daffodils out. But it is, it's just a lovely, a lovely time in the garden. And this light's quite good because this little camera can cope with it better. And hopefully it'll display better on your screen. So thanks for being with me again. And I'll be with you when there's back when there's something more evolved to show you. So thanks very much. Enjoy your garden and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>